So we're here today with uh, Dr. Roxanne Knock from the Cool On Feeds and uh, myself, Scott Kilber with Agtegra. We're going to talk a little bit about bunk management and scoring, scoring your feed bunks. Uh, just to give you an idea of what we look for as, as feed consultants when we come out and, and try to read a bunk. Uh, try to give you an idea how to do that too. So, uh, A lot of times we use the SDSU bunk scoring system and that's a scale that goes from zero to four to help you read the cattle and read the bunks and decide where we're going with the cattle. And so a bunk score is zero in that system basically means that that bunk is spit shined, that it's been empty for a long time. Uh, you can see in the bunk here today that we've got some area that's really slicked up. And so that would be considered a bunk score of zero. As we move into a bunk score of one, typically that means that we've got feed that's about one kernel deep across the bunk. Um, and a score of half means that we've got scattered feed in the bunk. Uh, and basically we want that to be all of the ration. We don't want any one particular part of that to be left because then that means that the cattle are selecting their own ration versus the one that we've balanced for them. Uh, as we get into the higher bunk scores, a bunk score two is gonna mean that we've got between 25 and 50% of that feed left. Bunk score of three means that we've got more than 50% left. And a bunk score of four means that the crown has been touched on that feed, but uh, basically most of the feed is left in the bunk. When we get into those higher bunk scores, a couple of things that we're gonna look for is, A, have we moved cattle out of that pen? Uh, some of the obvious things like that but also if the cattle are drinking, because if the cattle are not drinking, we're not gonna have the appropriate amount of dry matter consumption. We're not gonna have adequate feed consumption. And so in the winter time, if the water is froze up and those cattle don't have access to water, that can push the cattle off feed. Or if there's stray voltage through the water and those cattle stop drinking, that can cause us some major issues with intakes also. And so those are some things to check when we maybe suddenly have those higher bunk scores showing up and we really don't understand why because those obvious things uh, haven't changed. We want to look at the management of the cattle too when we're looking at the bunks. So it, you know, if you're looking and seeing a, a slick bunk and those cattle are, are charging the bunk and are basically lined up before you even get there with the feed wagon, we're, we're probably quite a bit behind those cattle and, and need to try to catch up to them a little bit. Um, if you pull up to the bunk and the cattle are, are just standing up and, and starting to come to the bunk and it's clean, um, we're probably right on track. You know, they're they're getting what they want, they're content, but yet they're, they're ready to eat again when that bunk is empty. Um, if we come up and that bunk's got some feed in it and we we put some more in and yet those cattle don't even get up or don't move or anything, um, we're, we're probably getting too far ahead of them and they're gonna need to back off a little bit, so. A good rule of cattle behavior when you go to feed is that when you come up with the feed wagon, we want at least a third of those cattle interested and up to the bunk. A third of those cattle may be getting up and interested and maybe a third of them are, are gonna stay where they're at, chewing their cud, um, and not come to the bunk right away. But that gives us a good idea of what their behavior is, what their appetite is towards the feed, and that we're probably on track where we wanna be. Like Scott said, if those cattle are pushing each other up to the bunk, uh, when you pull up with the feed wagon, we're behind them and we need to try to catch up to where they're at. Um, but if they're not showing any interest in that feed, even if it is slicked up, then we probably need to keep that feed call the same for the day. When we're moving cattle up on feed, if we've had a bunk score of zero for two days and we're gonna, we're gonna increase the amount of feed that we're delivering, we wanna try to be careful on how much additional feed we're delivering those cattle every day. When we're starting calves this fall and we know that we're gonna have to build their intake, we probably don't wanna move more than about a pound and a half of dry matter when we move those cattle and then make sure they clean that up for two days before we move them again. If you're constantly moving cattle up on feed and delivering them more every day, at some point you're gonna hit that plateau or a peak and then they're gonna drop off. And then we have to basically start those cattle all over on intake again. And so that's why we want you to make sure that those cattle are cleaning up that feed every every two, for two days before we move them or increase their feed. On finishing cattle, when we go to move those cattle on feed, 
I try not to move them more than a pound of dry matter at a time. And so at that point in time when they're on the finishing diet, we should have a pretty good feel for where their intake is by now. And so if they're cleaning that bunk up and we want to increase the feed delivery, we want to be careful on how much because we don't want to back those cattle off on feed and have to build them back up again. And so typically a half a pound to a pound of dry matter um, per head per day or per head on those increases is, is what I try to shoot for. So some other considerations to keep in mind as you're reading these bunks is what has the weather been, been doing the last day or two and or what's it going to do in the next day or two. Um, sometimes if you cattle have been eating steady and their, and their bunks are clean and then all of a sudden we, we see a score of a one or a one and a half coming in and but you stop and think that the last couple days we've gone from 60, 70 degree days to 80, 90 degree days. Um, those cattle are probably just not as hungry because the heat has, has backed their intake down. Or vice versa, if we're heading in and, and we've been clipping along at that 90 degrees and all of a sudden we, we get these fall fluctuations where we're gonna drop to 40 or 50 degrees for the next couple days, their intake's gonna jump up considerably um, you know, for that, that little colder stretch. So kind of keep that in mind um, along with Storms can can affect intake where they keep cattle from even coming to the bunk um, or lots of rain, things like that may change uh, the consistency of the ration in the bunk. Um, if we get a lot more moisture in there, that may change the pounds that you're delivering. Um, they may actually think they're eating more when really the dry matter is actually decreased, but you've increased the pounds of, of feed delivered because your feed is now wetter um, that you're delivering to them. So just a few things to keep in mind with, with what weather can do to us um, as we're feeding. The weather is definitely one of the reasons that we want those cattle to clean up that feed for two or three days before you increase them because we can get those fluctuations when we get really cool nights and they, they want to eat more and then we have a, a pop in the weather and some warm days and then they're going to back off again. and so. Keeping them consistent is important, and that's again why we why we try not to move those cattle on their feed deliveries every day, but instead try to keep it as consistent as we can.